Excellencies, friends, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to address you today as we celebrate the 55th anniversary of ASEAN. Thanks to our effective pandemic response and is guided by our ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework and its implementation plan. We have, many, we have emerged safer, stronger and more resilient as a community. Our trade volume has returned to the pre-pandemic level and ASEAN's economy is forecasted to grow by 4.9% this year and 5.2% next year. Meanwhile, the entry into force of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement this year demonstrates ASEAN's pivotal role in contributing to regional peace and growth, better the life of our people and provide opportunities for all. Excellencies, friends, ladies and gentlemen, notwithstanding these achievements, we must remain vigilant, vigilant against the ever-present risk to our recovery, such as disruption to the supply of key commodities, rising costs in food, logistics and transport, and the economic slowdown in major economies. We should therefore take heed of past experience in order to be better prepared for the future shocks. To this end, I wish to highlight four key areas going forward. First, as global linkages become more complex, new solutions are needed by committing more to regional integration and cooperation. No less of it, upholding the principle of open regionalism as well as ensuring ASEAN centrality and unity in the evolving regional and global architecture should remain the bedrock of our community building efforts. Second, ASEAN will need to ensure that initiatives embracing digitalization, such as the Bandar Seri Begawan Roadmap on Digital Transformation, are effectively implemented. This will enable us to create a thriving digital economy in a region of 463 million internet user and which is expected to reach 300 billion US dollar in 2025. We must also continue to improve our productivity and competitiveness in these new drivers of growth by investing in the region's human capital and providing greater access to health, future ready education, skill training and lifelong learning, as well as a reliable social protection system. Third, we should pay particular attention to the region's youth initiatives such as the first ASEAN Youth Dialogue as well as the ASEAN Junior Fellowship Program are part of our efforts to enable them to play a larger role and more meaningful role in building a more equitable, inclusive and greener community. Fourth, we need to re-strategize the way we live based on environmental principles of sustainability and resilience by mainstreaming the them across all areas of work, ASEAN should accelerate its green agenda in areas such as sustainable climate, biodiversity management, sustainable livelihood, circular economy and energy efficiency with renewable energy. Excellencies, friends, ladies and gentlemen, as the past 55 years of ASEAN have shown that only by working together can we effectively deliver economic prosperity and social advancement and long-lasting peace of our region. This message is clearly reflects the spirit of this year's theme of ASEAN ACT addressing challenges together under Cambodia's chairmanship of ASEAN. As we look forward to the next 55 years of ASEAN, 
we renew our pledge of solidarity with one another to address common challenges together and bring about more opportunities for all. Thank you and happy ASEAN days.